and welcome to this video. Uh, glorious Comrade Stalin has decided to send uh, these veteran Red Army soldiers over to uh, to Britain uh, to lead by the Soviet example, uh, bring about great music through the Red Army choir, and of course beat back the fascist hordes with that most infamous and terrible of Soviet weapons, the accordion. <laughs> I'm back after six months, I'm finally painting again, and I'll go over all will be explained in the final part of the video, but first of all, I'm just going to go over uh, the soldiers. So, uh, I've always loved the aesthetic of the Russian Civil War, you know, the Budinovka is arguably one of the greatest hats of all time, and uh, that's completely indisputable, and a fact backed up by various sources. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I think they look really nice figures by Copplestone casting. Um, yeah, you know, you've, you've got to love the pointy hats with the flaps and of course that beautiful red star. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how they've turned out actually. Um, so yeah, you know, you've got them charging forwards to, to the fascist foe. Um, yeah, um, looking quite fierce in there. Then we get on to the, the sergeant, the commissar. Um, I'm really happy with how he turned out as well. I think it's probably some of the best skin I've ever actually done. Uh, he's got his beautiful red flag there. Shmerti uh, Bajoyim, which is deaf to the bourgeoisie, a beautiful yet subtle slogan, um, and also Zalenina on the other side, which is for Lenin. Um, I would have done the flag a bit more uh, ornate with a hammer and sickle on it, uh, but I would actually like to get into doing Russian Civil War Wargaming at some point. Uh, and the hammer and sickle was actually originally the hammer and plow uh, during Trotsky's Red Army. So if I ever actually wanted to use these, in a Russian Civil War game, I couldn't use a hammer and sickle because it actually came after the war. Uh, so yeah, it's it's also it's only a unit marker as well, so keep it fairly plain and it does the job. But yeah, he's got a beautiful moustache there, um, one that Stalin would be very jealous of. Um, hay fever season, sorry. Um, but yeah, then we've got the Lewis Gunner there as well uh, with the the Streltsy stripes, and again a beautiful red star on his uh, on his cap. The Budinovka's got a really interesting story, actually. Uh, they were originally made by the Tsarist army uh, to be used after World War I for victory parades, uh, but because of World War I, and obviously they never actually won it, uh, did Russia. Um, you know, it kind of stayed in depots until the, the Red Army came along, and by popular demand, uh, the hats were adopted um, with red stars sewn onto the front to show infantry, blue star for cavalry, so on. Uh, for different units as well. Um, so yeah, you know, they had this kind of... Which, the hats part back to something called the Bogatiers, which were um, kind of Soviet... Uh, well, uh, Russian Crusaders from the, the Middle Ages. So they had this image of um, great Crusaders cam uh, campaigning for a better world, this kind of thing. And the stripes as well heart back to the same kind of units, um, showing them as elite. So, you know, th this kind of uniform has a lot of uh, Russian history into it, despite... The Soviets uh, disregarded a lot of Russian tradition, which is very uh, interesting. So yeah, uh, I'm really happy uh, with the sculpts as well. You know, a lot of the Budinovkas uh, on these are really well sculpted. You have some of the worst ones like that one there, but this one, you can really see the kind of shape in it, um, which you can kind of see on the one that I've got as well uh, a little bit. You know, cheap cheap thing, about £10 on e off eBay just for a Twitter uh, profile picture. But um, yeah, I uh, kind of use the same colour scheme as the British khaki. So it's uh, kind of consistent a little bit, um, it, it fits into the theme as well. So uh, if I were to do this again, I'd actually paint the trousers, um, some of the trousers brown, just to give it a little bit of variation, make it a little bit different. Uh, probably one of my favourite figures this one actually, just the shooting one. But yeah, that's what I've got, that's what I've got done. Um, and without further ado, I'll give a bit of an explanation about where the hell have I actually even been all this time. So yeah. 
what's actually going on then, what's going on with my life, or maybe to be more fitting, I should actually put the hat on to fit in with the theme. So yeah, as you can see, I'm back home, um, not at uni anymore, I've, um, I've just finished first year, so um, I've actually got some free time to myself now, I can do more hobby and stuff, um, do stupid stuff with the hats and that, you know, um, all that kind of thing. So um, yeah, what's been going on and why have I been away for so long? Basically, just uni work has been really kind of hard for me. I've been doing a lot of, uh, obviously, the essays, the exams, and also a lot of politicking as well. So um, I haven't really had time to fit in any kind of hobby at all since uh, the time I'm still here, still watching a lot of content, not as much as I'd like to. But now I'm at home, um, all I've really got is just like working and stuff, like in my job, um, and also a holiday as well. Uh, so I can actually have time to go back to doing what I love, you know, which is painting miniatures, you know. Um, cringe. But uh, in terms of what's coming up for the channel, I'm going to be, I'm working on some commissars with the megaphones and stuff, again, uh, from this range with the Russian Civil War, but also a, uh, a workers machine gun team with the flat caps uh, and a medium machine gun. So that'd be quite fun to work on. Um, after that, I think I'm going to go on to doing Mosley and his wife, and then I'll either do some BUF cavalry, um, which I've had for years, but uh, I absolutely love the, the look of cavalry. But um, I've never actually got around to painting it because I can't do horses that well and I find them really tedious to do. So um, I might do that or I might do some more um, workers militia and work on that because I've got a lot of the armour sorted now. It's just doing the infantry sections and stuff and all the kind of support weapons. So um, I'll get through them and try and get them sorted before I get back to uni. That's my kind of target. But I would actually also gladly get some more of the Bolsheviks as well because they were really fun to paint, so easy to do. Kind of reminded me of Napoleon in a way as well, because the you know the, the guns with the bayonets on them, um, the kind of generic charging poses as well. So it was quite a nice kind of harking back with a more modern feel on it as well. I say models a hundred years ago, but uh, but yeah, it was really fun to paint them. I'd gladly do more, and I'd actually really like, like to do some red cavalry as well, uh, with the again with the Budenovkas but in blue instead of red, because um, you know the the, the colour differentiates between units and stuff. But um, but yeah. I would gladly do some red cavalry and make a, a, a make the, the Soviet solidarity contingent a little bit stronger. So um, so yeah, with that done, um, this is the update, update over. Um, I'm back for now <laughs> until September when I vanish away for another six months again. But um, I'm looking forward to a, a good summer full of hobby. Hopefully you've all stuck around. You haven't all buggered off in this time. I've actually got more subscribers since I've gone inactive than I did when I was posting. So maybe uh, that's a sign for me to just never come back again. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if people actually watch this video and if they see it or not. So with that, uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.